Good morning. Good morning to each and every one of you. I know that you're saying to yourself, Pastor Graham, what is going on? But I want you to know that when you're in a real sacrifice of waking up, you want to do everything possible to make sure that you are reaching your goal. And I am tired, but I'm reaching my goal of getting up each morning. I know some of you are under your blankets just like I am. Some of you are laying down just like I am right now. And I just simply want to say to you, good morning, and thank you for joining us on Bible Boot Camp. Listen, we didn't say that we're trying to get pretty today, and we're not saying that we're trying to look a certain way. We're, all we're trying to do is worship this morning and go to God and see exactly what God has in store for us today. And so today, I want to welcome you to our 22nd day of Bible Boot Camp. We are in our 22nd day of Bible Boot Camp, and we are so excited about what God is going to do for each one of us today. We also recognize and know it, it, it is by His mercies and by His grace that He woke us up this morning to see another day. Now, I have a question. I don't know what you what you do every day that we get up, but is there anyone that's in their bed right now with the blanket over them watching this? What? Tell me exactly where you are right now. So I don't feel so bad for being where I am, but knowing that I am sacrificing this time. Where are you right now? In light of that, let's get ready for prayer. And let's uh, uh, just welcome Christ wherever we are so that we can have a worshipful experience this morning. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you thanking you for life. Thank you for strength. Thank you for the opportunity of prayer and praise. We believe, Lord, that you can do all things. We also believe that you woke us up this morning for a reason. You woke us up to give you the praise that you alone deserve. This morning, as we endeavor to connect with you, we ask that your Holy Spirit would be with us and bless us this morning. We're asking that whatever is said will be pleasing to you this morning. So again, thank you for the opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. And so today... We want to welcome you to our 22nd day of Bible Boot Camp. We are in our 22nd day of Bible Boot Camp, and we're so excited for this opportunity that we have this morning. And so wherever you are, whatever you're doing, know this much, that we want to connect to Jesus Christ. So wake up, stretch your spiritual muscles, and know that we have just a few more days left, but we have been sacrificing for God. Right now, uh, there's a song that I wanted to introduce to some of you. Some of you may know it already, but there's a song which is called, uh, f uh, which talks about forgiveness. Uh, all month long, about maybe two or three times, we let you listen to a song by Kevin LeVar called um, Your Destiny. But today, he made another beautiful song which talks about forgiveness. And so as we play this song, I want you to marinate on the words. So please look at the words of this song. God wants to give us a heart that forgives. He wants to give us a heart that yearns for him. So as we read these words, as we listen to these words, let's see what God is telling us as we connect to him. Let's look at these words and let's be blessed. Want a heart that forgives, a heart full of love, one with compassion just like yours above, one that overcomes evil with goodness and love, like it never happened, never holding a grudge. Want a heart that forgives, that lives and lasts, live a one that loving over and over again one that men can't offend cause your word is deep within one that loves without price like you Lord Jesus Christ one a heart that loves everybody even my enemies one a love like you be like you just like you I want a heart that 
just like you love people. I want to learn to forgive the way that God wants me to forgive. And so today, uh, with such a beautiful, which with such a beautiful song, God wants us to learn to forgive. Today, maybe it's your challenge to maybe call someone, maybe to talk to someone and ask them to forgive you or you forgive them because God wants us to be like him. Like the song says, to talk and walk like him, to be considered like him. Because God wants us to have a heart that forgives, like he forgives us. You know, I love him so much because he always forgives me. I know that he forgives me, and I know that he forgives you. And if God forgives us, then we ought to forgive others. You know, there's another video I want to show you today. We've played it a couple of times, but it, it is through his grace and his mercy that he forgives us. And so when I think of his grace towards me, I think of amazing grace. And so I just want to say, Lord, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for your amazing grace. Saved a wretch like 
Uh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved someone like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. But now I see what an amazing God that we serve. What an amazing grace he has for each one of us. Hey, we've been talking all month about uh, spending time with God, connecting to God, reconnecting to him. And so this morning would be no different. It is so important to realize and know that the way that we, rec that we connect to him and the, we the way that we stay connected to him is by three ways. We've been learning those three ways. And number one, it's getting into the word of God. Number two, it has been prayer. And number three, having a life of obedience. We believe that each one of us to have a life of obedience. But when it comes to his word, it is so important that we get into his word. So we've been introducing many of you to Water for the Thirsty. Water for the Thirsty is a Bible reading plan that takes us through a daily uh, uh, reading until we are finished in one year, the whole word of God, the full word of God. And so today we want to welcome you to this thoughts from Water for the Thirsty. Also, each month we've been going through the book of Acts the book of uh, uh, Psalms, the book of Leviticus. We've also been going through the thirsty. Let's bow our heads together as we look to God to bring us to an understanding of his word as we read but understand what he wants for us to do today. So, Father, we come before you again thanking you for this opportunity of prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. This morning, Lord, as we go into your word, we ask that whatever is said and done will be pleasing to you and to you only. In Jesus' name, amen. And so today, we welcome you to our 22nd day of Bible Boot Camp. And even though we've been going through all of his word, today we want to concentrate on uh, today's readings, which is Romans chapter 1. Leviticus 16 and 17, and Psalm 22, okay? I, I really believe that uh, God has something in store for us with this this morning. The first thing I want you to know is that one of my favorite, favorite Bible characters, one of them, is Paul. And then one of my favorite ones is David, too. So today we get to marinate on two lives. The first uh, one was Psalm 22. And in Psalm 22, the Bible gives us an understanding that David is questioning God, and more than questioning him, he's he's saying, I've been praying to you, God, but just, just don't know where you are. But by the end of the psalm, he recognizes, again, that God is on point and God is around. But have you ever felt that God is not near you? you ever felt that he's abandoned you? Well, I want you to know that he has not abandoned you. Psalm 22, verse 1 says, My God, my God. 
Why have thou forsaken me? Why are you so far away from me when I'm groaning to you for help? And as I look at this, I recognize that this is the same verse that Jesus uses when he's on the cross. Jesus uses this uh, same verse when he's on the cross, simply saying uh, to his father, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? And he uses this quoting from Psalm 22. But he recognized that his father didn't leave him, so to speak, but that his father was separated from him until the resurrection. We know this that he says to him, my enemies, in verse 12, my en enemies surround me like a herd of bulls. Uh, they're fierce against me. They've hemmed me in. They're like lions. They're jawing against me. And as I looked at this, I recognized that he's saying, he's telling God, God, uh, you know, I feel like I'm surrounded. I feel like uh, there's no way that I can go. I feel like I'm all messed up. But then he says to him in verse 19, now, Lord, don't stay far from me. Why? Because you are my strength. Come quickly to my aid. Save me from the sword. And I can proclaim to everyone that you are uh, um, the head of our kingdom. You are the great God. In verse 23, he says, I praise your name. We love you, Lord. And he said, we praise you in the great assembly. Now, wait a second. But at first, he starts off by saying, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? But he ends off by saying, there's no one, in verse 31, there's no one righteous more than you. You know, we have questioned God time after time again. We've put him uh, even on the back burner and then asked him, Lord, to save me or help me. But I want you to know that God never moved away from us. He would never leave us nor forsake us. And even though sometimes our prayers to him are, uh, Lord, why have thou forsaken me? If we give him a chance in our lives, we will recognize and know, even through those kind of doubting times, that he is still in the assembly of his people. He still is here. He still loves us. He still gives us his grace. He still saves us from our enemies. And count on him for him to deliver you from the jaws of the lions around you. And then when I look at Romans 1, when I look at Romans 1, Romans 1 gives me a, a, a an understanding of how uh, much God wants us to spread his gospel and be about his gospel. You know, when I look at Romans 1, I look at the life of Paul. And in the life of Paul, he is this individual that no matter what, he is going to bring the gospel. He's going to share the gospel. He's going to be about the gospel. And the Bible tells us, in Romans 7, I'm sorry, Romans 1 verse 16, he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every man who believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, which means to the Jews, yes, there's salvation given to you, but also to the Greeks, also to the Gentiles, which means that salvation is powerful. The gospel is powerful. And why is it powerful? Because he says that through faith, it changes people. Now, are you telling me that the gospel changes people? That the gospel changes people. Listen, it tells us that God's wrath against sin is great. He does not like sin. He does not want us to hold on to, unright to unrighteousness. He, he wants us to know that he will not campus around those whose heart is darkened listen the bible tells us again right that paul declares to the romans i am not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ what is the gospel of jesus christ the gospel of jesus christ is about his birth his life um, and, and when i mean his life i'm talking about his life well lived yeah, we're, we're talking about his death we're speaking of his resurrection. We're speaking about what he's doing for us right now, his, that he's coming back for us. And we ought to know that today he woke us up this morning, not just to reconnect to him, but to help reconnect others to Jesus Christ. The word of God says, I'm not ashamed of this gospel of Jesus Christ. It is, unto, it is power unto salvation. That means your life is powerful. That means you have the opportunity of living that life that God wants you to live today. Because he is powerful. 
He is powerful through you. That means you are powerful. So when you look at Romans chapter 1, <clears throat> you would see that he introduces Christ to the Romans. He steps back with the Romans. He writes over to the Romans. He lets the Romans know that you want to be powerful, uh, then you got to live like Christ. But if you want to share something powerful, you got to share the word of God. And Paul himself says again, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, which means the, the gospel saves. The gospel saves. And the word of God tells us that this gospel is given to everyone, not just to the Jew, but also to the Gentiles, which means this gospel is given to each one of us. God wants us to know that he loves us and that he has a purpose for us and that he, and he wants us to recognize that we can be just as powerful today by giving the gospel, teaching the gospel, preaching the gospel, but more than that, living his gospel. And so in light of this, today we want you to know that uh, we want to pray for you that you will live this gospel. Before we talk about the prayer request, I want to pray about us living the gospel. So Father, we come before you asking you to help us to be about your gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. At this moment, we want you to know that you can download Water for the Thirsty at waterforthethirsty.com www.waterforthethirsty.com and then there's those who want us to pray for you and we want to pray for you and we want you to send your prayer request to FCM Bootcamp that's FCM Bootcamp at gmail this morning as we pray we, uh, we're going to ask you to just leave your prayer request on the chat room just whatever is your prayer request leave it on the chat room i see sean is on this morning and i want you to know we're praying for your wife we're praying that that test is going to be there's going to be a great outcome of that test we pray for each one of you but at this moment in time we're just going to play a, a song together and as we play this song know this that we want you to write out your prayer request so we can pray for you So at this moment, we want to pray for you. We want to pray for each one of you. So bow our heads together. Father, again, we come before you thanking you for being a good God to us. We thank you for waking us up this morning to see another day. We thank you for the opportunity of prayer and praise. We thank you for the opportunity of thanksgiving. This morning, Lord, we come before you 
Thank you, first of all, for your word. Thank you for Romans 1. Thank you for Psalm 22. Thank you for Leviticus 16 and 17. We're grateful, Lord, that though we have failed, that we felt like you failed us by saying, why are you for forsaken us? We recognize and know that you're still with us. Live the gospel. Help us to be about the gospel. We bring before you uh, these different prayer requests, Lord. We ask you that you continue to be with Sean and for those results to be uh, uh, great. As, uh, as they both really have this baby together. We ask you to be with uh, Mari, which is an unspoken prayer request. Retha, praying for safe travel for friends flying. Um, also, a return of, our teen sa of a teen safely. And we also ask uh, that you be with uh, 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 with the, uh, Jones to help the father with her, her children. Um, we're also asking in a special way that you'll be with um, uh, Hollis praying to God for health bring please be with Marie in a marked wing uh, and I'm going to say this um, uh, that you continue to bless uh, Mary in a marked way where you can uh, help her be with her uh, bless her husband and her motivation and her property Lord I'm asking in a special way that you would do what you do best I ask you that you will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us. And um, I'm asking you that whatever we do, that it will prosper only in your name. A special prayer just came in concerning healing for Jones' body from cancer. Lord, we believe that you can do all things. I just got a little riveted hearing that. So, Lord, please excuse me. So, in light of that, we pray for uh, this individual in a marked way that... You will uh, rid this individual's body of cancer. We know you can do all things. Lord, today we put our hands in your hands. We're asking you, Lord, that you will help us recognize how true you are and how great you are. And this morning, we want to connect to you. So help us to be connected and stay connected to you. We ask you with all, all we ask you, all of these things by your mercies in Jesus. And so again, I want to thank you for joining us on Bible Boot Camp. I, I know I'm in my son's room on the floor, but I just couldn't get up. So I want to thank you for joining us and that we sacrifice this time together. This morning, I want to give you the picture of the day. You can go to my Facebook at FCM Boot Camp. FCM Bootcamp, or you can go to Paul Graham, my Facebook, where the pick of the day simply says, God is not an option. He is a necessity. God is not an option. He is a necessity. And I hope you see him as a necessity in your life. I want to thank you for joining us on Bible Bootcamp. Know this, that God is ever present with us, blessing us and strengthening us. Let's stay connected to him. And thank you for joining us on our 22nd day of Bible boot camp. Invite someone else as we go through this last week together, knowing that God is able to do exceedingly much in our lives. Be blessed.